Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MXGP 2020. It is now MXGP Monday as of last week and this week, so we are going to be continuing this trend right here, right now, with Jeffrey Hurlings and the Red Bull KTM Factory Racing Team in Imola, Italy for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. So here is Jeffrey Hurlings on the outside of the grid. It's going to be difficult to get into turn one, one minute for the grid girl and we are ready to go. Waiting for the grid to drop, get the best start if we can. It's a decent start, but it's probably not going to be the best. As they're going to go around the outside, massive contact there, not able to get into it. turn one. Certainly not going to be in the conversation for a whole shot, as Gautier Parlan takes the whole shot here in the Grand Prix of Emilia Romagna. It's a good, clean jump there as Clement de Salas in third place. Good stuff for the Kawasaki man. As Tim Geyser got a good start as well. So Parlan, Geyser, de Sal. Uh, it's uh, Jeffrey Erlings. KTM in fourth place. Now in third place, actually, is. Paul, why did um, Tim Geyser decide to stop halfway through the corner there? So we're getting pushed wide from Glenn Koldenoff. And now Glenn Koldenoff trying to get through on Tim Geyser. Good stuff from the man on the gas gas. Bounce a bit. Oh, Tim Geyser up in the air there. We didn't get a good jump. Of course, we are constantly improving and trying to get better and better at this game. We will eventually be dominant, like we would be on ride four. Watch out for the signs there. Oh, big, big bump. Get ready to hold left on the both left and right log sticks. As we contact me there with Tim Geyser, but it's quite all right. We're still both on board our respectable bikes. From KTM on the Honda. Good berm there as Paulan is getting away with it at the front. But like Mark Almond, Sean Simpson has crashed in this Grand Prix of Emilia Romagna. Now into the final sector, the final corner. We do make that stick so far. Now into the first corner. It's decent stuff. Getting over the bumps. Getting ready to jump into the berm. A little bit wide there as we will go over the berm. That's not what you want to do. And so try and time the drop down. So Glenn Koldenoff, what on earth has happened to him? As we are just now in receipt of second place. As Glenn Koldenoff gave up on the gas gas. So we take the berm again. To going for that wider line once more. I prefer to take that corner that particular way. And now to the left of us is the KTM sign. As we are on board the KTM. Quite fitting. As we carefully trying to navigate around these couple of corners. The group behind us is catching. And is looking very eager. As Gautier Palan is getting away with it at the front. He is really getting away now. He is checking out of this Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Of race one. Race one of two, of course. That's how it's done in MXGP. That's nice, smooth acceleration. Helps us get around to that corner. It's three seconds to Gautier Parlant. Now breaking in for the tighter line once more. Careful over these berms. We have seen many crashes here in the career mode. As in Sean Simpson also went down there. I think at least he went down as we entered that corner at least. But we are closing in on Parlant now. Is this a matter of time? There will be three laps remaining, considering that the next lap will indicate the final two laps. We are closing in. I'm going to... Powerland's gone down! Oh my goodness! The Frenchman's down! We have been gifted not only second place, but now first place. As we avoid the Pirelli sign to our left. And that could be Curtains. Race one. Book will be down in the books for a successful Doctor Race victory, providing... Everything still remains intact. Of course, going for their live commentary on this one. There was a blue plumage there. It's now white. I like to see the change of uh, atmospheres in the background. As we... Oh, big bump. Oh, my goodness. Where am I going? Stay, stay. <laughs> Easy. Easy hurlings. As we flick it left. Good stuff so far. A little bit too much acceleration. The rear tyre slipped out a little bit there. Something more you could feel more than you can actually see with this camera angle. Of course, not using the third-person camera angle, as I've mentioned before on MXGP Mondays, because it's bloody awful. Pants, in a word. <laughs> we are actually getting away here. Good to see. It's Cairoli and Paulan battle and jostle for third and fourth place, respectively. <laughs> it's still going off down there. As so we now cross the finish line, to indicate two more laps remaining. So two more laps of dominance for Hurlings. 
it did feel like we were catching up to Paul Anne, so maybe the pressure got to him. Who knows? Jeffrey Erling's getting ready to turn him right. Getting ready to flick in left next to the Pirelli sign. A big wheelie there as well. Of course, put the weight on the rear of the tyre when you're accelerating so the bike doesn't get, like, graveled in. Trudging in in the, uh, in the gravel. Some good stuff. Oh, careful. Almost dropped it there then. <laughs> Almost dropped it, I tell you. Could feel it going. Understand MXGP 2020 has the next gen update very soon. Not sure what the hell's going to happen really there. I think it's just visual changes. Thankfully, MXGP 2020 and the console version should be the same from my understanding. We'll soon find out. As we are well and truly checking out here of this Italian Grand Prix. Easy stuff so far. I did not think Imola would be this particularly easy. Oh, stopped at a dime there. As we bump over the, the barriers. Of course, to mention MXGP 2020, doing the career mode. And Cairoli's gone down. I think Cairoli went down in that corner. But, uh, everyone else seems to crash out. The Jerry Erlings indicates the final lap is upon us. And I have been doing the MXGP 2020 career mode, and I've been enjoying it very much. I lost the red plate just a few days ago. Unfortunately, I crashed out in uh, Agueda, Portugal. Not very good on that track. It used to be one of my favourite tracks, and it still is, but... It's not that great on it anymore. And of course, Monster Energy Supercross, the official motocross video game 4, is coming out soon as Glenn Koldenoff has gone down as well. Is that the second time Koldenoff has gone down on the gas gas? Goodness gracious. We have been gifted everything here. Of course, this is still on 120% difficulty, if that's how it works on this game. Oh my goodness. Get back on the... Oh, it's alright, we're, we're still miles ahead. <laughs> oh my... I think it's... Is it realistic and is there still 120% difficulty? I do remember it's on the hardest settings. Of course it always is for these bike games. Wouldn't, I refuse to play anything less. So, uh, Sean Simpson also crashed early and Glenn Koldoff's crashed twice and yet they're still fighting for the podium position. Pretty amazing stuff, dare I say it. So, <laughs> I have very nearly bumped into that Monster Energy sign there. A little bit of a lack of concentration does happen when you're leading these Grand Prix. I do find it's easier to chase rather than... or hunt rather than be hunted. But never mind, it's still going to be another win and race one. And this is technically our second victory in a row, but the Grand Prix is yet to be finished as we get a nice jump over the finish line. So there is race one's results. Jeffrey Hurlings wins this one from Glenn Koldenoff and Sean Simpson somehow makes the podium after crashing early on in the race. Tony Cairoli fourth, and Mitchell Evans rounds out the top five on board the Honda. Of course, the Grand Prix results so far is it is as you were. Hurlings, Koldenoff, Simpson, Cairoli, Evans, DeSalle, Paulan, Fevre, Van Horbeek, and Jeremy Siwa round out your top ten. So here we are back once more in Emilia Romagna. For Jeffrey Hurlings to take his first place on the grid. It's entirely up to him where he chooses, and of course we are choosing the spot closest to the corner of turn one. Let's see what the Dutchman can do from first. We had a decent start last time, but it's not going to be quite the same, but we do have the inside line to bully our way through on, and to take the whole shot. Good stuff from Jeffrey Erling so far. Can we repeat that dominating, dominating performance in race one, right here in race two? To take the Grand Prix, we would pretty much need to finish Still high up, but not having to finish first is a bit of a blessing and much more of a part of relaxation because we can relax just a little bit knowing that we don't have to go full gung-ho to win the Grand Prix of Emilia-Romagna. Well, good stuff so far. Over a wider line here, so the nature of that corner did not allow me to tuck it in. Of course, defending well, just in case there would be any would-be attackers of Cairoli, teammate. Sean Simpson, the man who finished third place in race one. He was eager to get through on Cairoli, but couldn't make it stick. It's Cairoli and Mitchell Evans is there now as well. Shout out to Mitchell Evans. He's on the Honda. Big jump. Not quite nailing that one. Of course, when you do make these jumps, you want to try and land with both wheels on the decline of the corner. Of the hill, rather. As uh, Cairoli. Whoa, 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 whoa! Cairoli, what? <laughs> Like a booking Bronco. Kicked him off for absolutely no reason whatsoever there. That was mad. I don't think Imola is great for the AI. So if you're looking for your first victory, I guess Imola is the track. 
did not think um, the AI would struggle so much on this one, especially considering the hard time that I had in such tracks like Matali Basin and uh, Guayda, Portugal. What a oh, big bump there. I'll try and avoid that little bit of a jump there, because I can't seem to get the, the corner right. I'm going to go for a tidal line here to see what the difference is. They're pretty decent. That's how you got to do it in uh, MXGP. Of course, there isn't actually a particular racing line that you can use. There's many. It's just a matter of preference and choice to decide where you want to go. So I'm going to try and take different lines this time. Of course, some corners dictate to literally only one or two. But some have many different ways of going through. So we now go for a big lunge. Line our wheels up. Nicely done so far. Careful not to accelerate too much. Did give it a little bit too much welly there, but it's absolutely quite all right. As 36 seconds remain of this particular Grand Prix's regular schedule laps. And then it'll be time for the final two, where the Cairoli time will be in effect. I beg to differ. It's... Oh my goodness, something put me off there. Was that a rider who is so far... Yeah, there is a back marker that completely threw me off as Cairoli almost died once more. And I had to check to see if I was still in first place, and I thought all oh, my commentary would be wrong, but who the hell is that far? Oh, what was that? Oh, my goodness, right. We need to really concentrate here. I think Glenn Coldenough is having a fit in this one. What on earth is going on there? He's in front of us now, but he's... I'm confused. We need to catch up this group ahead of us so I can figure out what on earth is going on here. We are going to go over this little burn for the... Oh, I don't like that little jump. Always throws me off, but as we rocket towards turn four. Good stuff so far. Big leap. A leap again. Position the wheels correctly. And we are well in pursuit of Tony Cairoli. Hopefully we can chase the man from Italy. We're doing a decent job so far. Bumpy, bumpy over these parts. Sean Simpson's gone down, but Sean Simpson was behind, so we're not really concerned about that one too much. Well, it looks like now we're actually in fourth place. We're, we're still only in third because that's Mitchell Evans ahead of us, who's ahead of Kai Rowley. And then there's Glenn Koldenoff, who's even further ahead. Or it might be Ever Gavenny Borbyshev. I'm not entirely sure who the hell that is. But what on earth has happened to them to be that far down? I'll tell you what, the comeback is on, though. The comeback is on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, why does it do that every time? I had, I had the same problem on career mode. I'm not actually abusing that corner. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's carnage. Oh, I've lost it. I've lost my bottle. Glenn Cold. Wait. I'm so confused. <laughs> Glenn Goldenoff is there. What is going on? Confusion. Delusion. And just general misunderstanding, I guess. I generally thought that was Glenn Goldenoff in, uh, as the back marker. So we now make third position back. But we do only have... Oh my goodness, what was that? We do only have two laps remaining, and it looks like Mitchell Evans is quite far ahead now from Cairoli. So if we do manage to catch Cairoli, it's going to be another challenge to catch Mitchell Evans. So the win streak is potentially over already. Didn't last very long, did it? It doesn't end in Ride 4, but it does end in MXGP 2020. But it's quite alright. We're back next week, fighting for the double victory again. Not decided which track to do. If you have any track recommendations, let me know, of course. Always happy to do requests. There's Jeffrey Hurlings fighting that, that KTM. I'll tell you what, we might actually close down Cairoli, providing I don't make another mistake. We are closing. Is Cairoli close enough for Mitchell Evans? I don't think he's going to be. He's quite far ahead. We managed to do that one pretty better this time. Going for the wider line, of course. Good job, Jeffrey. It's going to be a decent lap, this as well, actually. It might even be the fastest lap of the race. As Mitchell Evans starts us off for the final time. And it wasn't the fastest lap of the race. I braked a little bit earlier to make sure I was be okay. As my concentration is teeming right now and uh, my commentary is dwindling. It's difficult to maintain it throughout the entire session. Watch out for Kyroli. Wow, I'll tell you what, this could be a decent finish. Going for that wider line again. Let's get the acceleration. A bit of a jump now. That's nice so far. All the way in the back. Oh, this could be a one hell of a finish. I'm really going for it now. Cairoli is on the charge. Cairoli time is well in effect. But is Dr. Ace time in effect? And if you're not familiar with Cairoli time, that basically means that he gets better 
when those two laps are indicated. I'll tell you what, this could be one hell of a finish. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. This could be one heck of a finish. As Cairoli is probing, we are probing up on the inside of Cairoli. Oh, I almost touched the barrier again. Mitchell Evans, he's defending well. Oh, he's also taking the shorter line. If he, oh, we're not going to catch Mitchell Evans because I made that little bit of a mistake. As Cairoli's gone down, Cairoli has gone down. Oh, was Mitchell Evans big mistake there? I'm going to absolutely leather it into this final corner. Mitchell Evans wins. Oh, I leathered it. <laughs> Mitchell Evans wins. Cairoli did not make it. Oh, did he make it? I think Glenn Coldoff beats him, but Jeffrey Erlings takes second place. So that is the final rankings for race two here in the Grand Prix of e Emilia Romagna. Mitchell Evans wins on board the Honda. Jeffrey Erlings second. Glenn Coldenoff third. And Tony Cairoli just barely misses out by a 50 thousandths of a second. So the final results of Imola Italy. Grand Prix results, of course. Jeffrey Erlings wins just ahead of Glenn Coldenoff by five points. But one point further behind, Mitchell Evans with Tony Cairoli, Sean Simpson, Clement DeSalle, Jeremy Sewer, Jeremy Van Horbeek, Brian Bogers, and Gautier Parlan finish off your top 10. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and I shall see you next time. Ciao for now.